Call this meeting to order. Uh, approve notification. Who's posted, Mr. Chair? Thank you. Agenda. It looks like we've got a, an adjusted agenda. We're going to scratch number seven okay. out of the 16. So 15. So we'll have 15 total. Okay. Also move to accept the agenda. Do you have a second? Second. I'll, I'll second. On second, Linda with the motion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, previous meeting minutes. Did everybody have a chance to look at them? Is there any changes? Yeah, right. I've done this morning. Everything good on those? If I entertain a motion to approve the previous meeting minutes. So <laughs> moved. I'll um, second. This was a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Hi. Hi. Motion carries. All right. Fair fund transfer from general fund to the original county fair revolving fund. Uh, Mr. Chair is looking for an approval uh, resolution as how we've historically done it for an appropriation from the general fund to the fair fund 68 revolving loan in the amount of $15,000 uh, funds will be used for fair and recycling committee to conduct their 2021 Richland County fair. Uh, the appropriation is for a 90 day a period of 90 days that the appropriation is made. Then there is a uh, attached in there. You'll see a resolution historically of what has been done with it. And, uh, then we have the previous one from 2019, which showed the, uh, how the transfer went in the previous years as well. So again, looking for motion today for a temporary apportionment and transfer from the general fund uh, to the Richland or to the county uh, to the revolving fair fund 68 in the amount of fifteen thousand um, dollars excuse me all right this is normal business so I mean we do this every year can I get a motion so moved I'll, I'll second it Linda with the second any discussion uh I I mean I'm glad we're having a fair this year which we didn't have last year so are the dates the 9th, 10th, and 11th that week or? I don't know that off the top of my head. Let me see if I can track okay. it out soon. So. The entries start on that Tuesday, of, Tuesday after Labor Day. Okay, so I'm sure it's 9, 10, 11, 12, right? Correct, in September 8th through the 12th. Okay, thank you. No more discussion. I can have my hot dog for you. Favor, say goodbye by saying aye. 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 Mr. Chairman, yes. Who, who's doing the minutes? Right here. Right there. Josh yeah. Bell. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. Well, he does a nice job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Number six economic development. Mr. Chair, looking today for motion to. Uh, to submit resolution to the county, uh, Richland County Board, looking to passing of a resolution. Uh, by Richmond County Board declaring. Uh, Wait, which one are we on now? Uh, uh, looking for this is the uh, fair housing. Fair project. housing one. Okay, yep. I just want to get. Right. Looking for passing of a resolution by the county board declaring July as Fair Housing Month. This resolution meets a required action by the CDBG closed program that we are in, engaged with for the Lone Rock. Uh, Village Center Park and Richland Center Auditorium Accessibility Project. The resolution language is based on guidance received from our grant administrator, uh, Bierbacher Engineering. Uh, the background on this is that the CDBG closed program was placed into effect January 2019 and pertains to the closeout of the CD, County CDBG Economic Development Revolving Loan Fund with a value of approximately 1.2 million. Under the closed program, the county was allowed uh, to submit for the two projects that we were awarded. And this is kind of a part of the grant uh, requirement is for the petition to declare it again a fair housing month. So the resolution is attached as the whereas statements uh, that impact equality and opportunity for housing and trying to eliminate barriers to discriminate against and declares then that the month of July is fair housing month. Mr. Chair. Entertain a motion. I moved, Melissa. And I'll second. It's a, it's, it's just a, a nice thing, right? 
It is. It's yeah. it's an endorsement of the month and it encourages the community to again yeah. to try to uh, break down barriers on equal housing types of matters. That's great. And I that's second great. Melissa. It doesn't matter. All right. We got a motion. Any more discussion? More discussion. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Right. Number seven. Clerk and administrator office budgets for 2022. Uh, I thought we skipped or, that. I'm sorry, seven. So eight administrators report on 2022 budget process. Or a report. Is that on the review of the fund or I don't have one on here, right? I don't I don't have material. Okay, on I didn't that. see that. Okay. I was just gonna give an oral report yeah. on it. Um, yeah. So we've had two meetings now with department heads in regards to the budget based on the guidance we approved on in our last meeting. We've had discussion back and forth with them. Um, we've come up with a couple amendments that need to be made uh, to be made. Uh, off the, one of the changes is uh, one of the funds that we had on our tracking form we had authorized to uh, ambulance. That one more appropriately is authorized to the sheriff's office. And that's the 911 outlay fund. Um, so we're putting that in the control of uh, play in the sheriff's office. Um, found some discrepancies on some of the numbers that we were reporting, like with Pine Valley. I think we had an extra zero in there for the payback that they gave us last year. I think it was three hundred forty-two thousand. We had inadvertently had an extra zero, making their payback of three million, which would have been great, but that's, of course not reality. Uh, some of the additional uh, things that we've talked about through it is uh, we're going through a process of having the budget submitted to us in a in an Excel format digitally versus a PDF file, which should expedite our upload into the system. Um, but we're still trying to tease out some of those problems of, of loading it up onto the spreadsheets and making sure that that happens. Um, and then there are a, a few additional budgets to present to you folks on the 24th, including including overseeing the property listers, uh, UW campus that you had pointed out. And I think there's one other one that we will condense down to that timeline. So um, discussions have been good with department heads. Uh, obviously, not everybody's excited about the limitations that are in place, but I think over, you know, overwhelmingly, everybody kind of understands the situation that the county's in and, and is, is putting forth good efforts to try to meet the criteria that is put into place. We expect the budgets to be coming back uh, to us with a no later date than the 30th. So there's still myself and Derek's budgets that we brought forward together um, when we do the preliminary layout as we work through the personnel shifts, adding another person, and then figuring out uh, cooperatively how we're gonna add, uh, handle some of the internal office things like our printers and some of our contracts and placements and things of that nature. Mr. Chair. All right, well then there's no action we need to do. Just have a question for, can I have a question? Yep, go right ahead. You know, since our, our campus board didn't have an official meeting, so I went, to Aunt, she, I went to Angie and she showed me the budget and it looked okay. And so I okayed that for as a chair. Is that going to be sufficient for you? Yes, to, to bring it in. I'm looking yeah. for department heads. My purpose is to come in from department head approval. Okay. When it comes to you folks um, from, a, from a committee type of a standpoint, they're due on the 30th, but I don't think we talk about them until several days. Yeah, so after. we're going to meet after that again, but we also, I, I saw it before the 30th. I just want to make sure that you're okay with that. Thank you. Yep. Uh, discussion. Yes, go ahead, Don. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Landrick, uh, did, do limitations vary from department to department to department to department? The variations in what contacts supervisor see? Uh, is there a is there a uniform uh, limitation across the board, or uh, limitations on various lines depending on a case by case basis? The guidance that we released out generally is a zero per, a zero percent levy increase. Yes, uh, for operations. Now that some of our departments, though, you know, we were working with known discrepancies on uh, trying to incorporate different features, like with the land conservation, like we had talked about with the land technician position. Um, working in a, a, an additional position for a district attorney, additional guidance given to my office on adding another staff member. So we have a baseline of make it work under a zero percent at which preliminary budgets should be brought forward. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, like we had talked about, we're having add-on features of this is what it makes it 
or it gives zero percent or underneath the additional guidance is is defined and to add these other functions in to go above zero percent cost as much to do these types of things. Does that answer your question, Supervisor? Yes, thank you. All right. Any more discussion? Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, and I'd let Mr. Langer know this at the let this uh, the one department at the meeting a week ago. They passed the state budget. They're supposedly increased to staffing grants for land conservation staff. Uh, they don't go before the land and water board until like the fourth or the first week in August. So I, I may have some just to let you know that hopefully before the 24th I come I'll have those numbers for you. I don't, I don't have any guarantees when they're going to release those numbers, but there's supposedly an increase. So we'll see. Of course, like every year going through the process, we'll be making the best guess and best judgments with the information we have at hand at the moment. Any more comments? <laughs> questions? Now we'll go to nine, review of fund 75 capital improvement and capital project borrowing. Mr. Chair, looking today for motion to accept report on the fund and 75 2020 capital projects uh, fund. Richland County and County Supervisor Josh Bell is conducting a review and audit of fund 75 capital improvement borrowing fund. Uh, the report is attached that you would have seen on the folder on the as a spreadsheet as item 09A, I believe. The report helps to pick expenditures of the remaining funds. The report is, uh, is provided to show progress in completing the uh, planned projects. The remaining funds for projects in the possible future need to reappropriate funds to meet county needs within the intent of the borrowing authorization resolution. Um, viewing points as we again kind of pick out is again to look at the current progress. Review outstanding projects or unspent funds and then identify potential uh, underspending or reappropriations. Um, as we continue to work through the project, uh, we're still trying to uh, square up, you know, what was the intent of some of the expenditures or what it was borrowed for because we, you know, it was kind of done off of a single page document with the amounts. I think we had a couple supplementary breakdowns, like from an MIS department on some categories for the MIS uh, purchases. But with that kind of up, Josh, is there additional things that you'd like to point out on that spreadsheet uh, to bring to folks' attention? You know, basically, I sent out this information to all the department heads that had um, funding here and solicited feedback. But we did get some feedback on items to remove to put to different funds or just to move in different buckets within this fund. I show on the PDF that there's still about 1.5 million uh, left in this fund for spending. But if you look back up through, Part of that's just for the ambulance garage that's going to go in front of the county board coming up this month. The dam, which we'll be talking about shortly after this. So I think if I remember what my calculations were, there may be. Like 182,000 on the yeah, summary page. Yeah, there's 182,000 that's kind of. Not committed. not committed to anything at this point. That doesn't mean that it's not going to be used, but there's nothing in the works at this point that I'm aware of. So, and part part of it, like I don't remember what what child support had. They had like twenty thousand. Um, yeah, they spent five hundred bucks. So, I mean, there's still a chunk of money there that, if they don't have a use for it, could be potentially allocated elsewhere if if so needed or. Can I ask a question? Where do am I not seeing this report? Where might should it be on here? I yeah, got that's additional document in the folder, I believe. Should go sideways? It's 9A. I don't know. It's 9A fund tracker. Well, I was on 9A, but it just has that left. Put it on the top of the tab if you go to the total summary. Total oh, fund summary. Thank you. I'm sorry, but I just no. not Right. Well, yeah, in yeah, but we've um, okay. That helps me. I don't want to be where you were. Our PDF do the best always at trying to bring over an Excel document. Yeah. I apologize. Now I got it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is Fund Seventy Five. We're speaking of, is it not? Correct. So it can only be used for capital projects. I I think what it, what we're Talking though, Marty, is that you know, out of the projects we have, there could be some additional stuff. You know, if there's money left, we could easily spend it on a courthouse or somewhere right. like that. 
Well, so, right, but it would have to be capital durable things, not programmable things. Correct. Within the limitations of the authorization resolution, and then, you know, presumably kind of in line with the intent of, of the different items that were used to kind of cost out how much we need would also be appropriate, but there's more discretion kind of in there that I would be looking for this body's guidance on mm -hmm. what's appropriate and what's not. I would take 182,000 for roads in a heartbeat, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're doing 27 miles this year, right? So. But, but that, I, I guess it's good. It's good that we're less than more. Mm -hmm. I guess that's a good way to look at it. Mm -hmm. We've got, hopefully there's some room to maybe in some areas where we could use it for that capital borrowing instead of next year's. Certainly, because even with our, with our short term expenditure list, you know, we were able to maybe capture half of what's requested. So we still have, we, we have a historic courthouse roof project that we have uh, bids out on right now. So trying to find a use for it isn't going to be a problem. It's just going to be finding the most appropriate and most priority type of a use is what we'll have to decide. Mm -hmm. Anything else that you had, Josh? No, that was really it. This is good. I'm sorry that I couldn't find it this morning. I really stay. All right. So, any more comment, questions? No, it's very good. So we don't need to take any action on that. This is basically the review, correct? If you'd like to take a motion to accept the report, okay, then we can. Okay. Kind of I'll move to accept the report. Window with the motion to accept the report. I'll second it. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Very. Okay, number 10, land conservation use of fund 75 funds for Mill Creek Dam repair. Uh, today, looking for a motion to approve expenses for repair of the Mill Creek dams in fund 75 budget. Background in this item uh, during the process uh, was put into fund 75 borrowing for repairs to the Mill Creek. Creek dams were built through a federal PL 566 watershed funds. Eight dams were built in the late 50s and early 60s to prevent flooding, especially in the village of Bullock. Richland County is responsible for operating and the maintenance of these dams. After careful consideration, Land Conservation Parking Committee have come up with a repairs list attached uh, to the document, which again is another Excel spreadsheet. The committee will continue to consider additional work related to these dams with remaining funds. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would defer to conservation as Kathy uh, in regards to any questions. Kathy, if you could uh, move up to the table if you get any questions, just so that the owl can pick up your voice. Thank you. Oh, you don't want to sit by me. <laughs> and um, we're looking at doing some, right now it's kind of minor stuff, but it's stuff that needs to be done. Uh, the Robson Dam is a little dam along Highway G, mm -hmm. Highway G. And we're looking at we have to repair the riser pipe, put a new uh, new bend on it, the elbow that comes up, and and that's roughly seven hundred, probably seven hundred dollars. We'll have to rent a mini excavator. Um, one of my staff is capable of; they'll just clean it out so we can put that on. Mm -hmm. And then we'll we're um, going to do a well abandonment. There's a old windmill in the middle of the pool area, oh. and if that. We're just worried about it should have been done years ago when it was first put in and just worried about what effect it will have on the dam. And then um, there's three other dam, two other dams, I should say. Um, one is on the John Hooth property and one is on the big dam along 171. The cradles that hold the concrete cradles that hold the pipes at all the pipes are starting to crack and it's been recommended by the Fed, uh, Natural Resources Conservation Service that we buy some, it's called a Belzona epoxy. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if there's a type one thing. It is, it's four hundred about $460 a bucket. Rest me is going to take five buckets for that. So right. the, the cost on that, the upper part is about $4,800. And then the, that Hooth Dam, um, the Ewers Dam, and the, we call it the Durst Dam. It's the last one up County Z. Um, there is uh, willows that are coming into the pool, which will get onto the dam if we don't take care of it. 
and it's and it's not just it's not really a maintenance thing it's it's a structural thing if we, if we don't do it so it's renting an excavator and then fuel for the excavator about twelve hundred dollars the total would be about six we're assuming six out excuse me six thousand dollars at the most for that project coming out of 175. well how many more projects do you feel is that it no, that's why we're doing some more. We're looking at other ways because um, to do more things, but that's what we came up right now. Um, and there may be some projects actually upstream, especially of the Robins, Robson Dam, because of what happens is it there's so much area above it. It's it it fills and then goes over the spill emergency spillway. And washes out the road below, so we want to kind of protect that. So there may be some we may be looking at, and a couple of them where we've had those issues to um, maybe do some upstream projects, you know, some dry dams or something upstream to kind of prevent that, slow the water down a little bit to keep those dams where they're at. But the committee's in the process of looking at some of those. Cassie, you said that the dam was along Iowa C. G. G. Up above Boss Town. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. One of all of them, isn't it? Yep. Just because of the sheer amount of volume that it goes through it on a bad day. Mm -hmm. That's correct. <laughs> I, I, we've talked about several times. So. Um, yep. Good. Uh, one thing to be concerned about now: when does all this have to? This might have to be spent by. 2.9 we have to have expended uh, by I think it's a March date 20 to what 2023 does that sound right Josh no you said 24 24 let me know we have to be just so we keep yeah, right. you yep. know, just so we keep on track with that because that's that's when it's going to spend yeah all right make the motion to approve it's Melissa with the motion to approve okay Second. Linda with a second. Any more discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? All in carries. Thank you. Thanks. Number 11. Sheriff's Office to use uh, Fund 75 funds for wearable video recorders. Here, look at today for motion to approve a portion of remaining Fund 75 money. Purchase new wearable video recorders for the patrol staff. We have Chief Porter here present on the background and describe this one for us. Should we be looking at the second thing or all the list? So what what we're running into now is um, a good portion of our wearable video recorder inventory is getting older. Um, they're sealed units, so we can't just replace the battery. The issue we're coming into is if batteries are failing, we're not having the battery life even to get us through a full shift of work. Um, so if we are out on a call, our camera fails, and we're no longer recording. That's kind of getting to be something where that's it's expected of us that we have these recordings, and and where I've been kind of going on borrowed time. I've gotten a bunch of borrowed units from the police department. Because uh, they had replaced their inventory, but their units are failing as well because they're just old inventory. Um, I started looking at into replacements uh, for this. Uh, Motorola Solutions is, had purchased WatchGuard. Uh, it seems like a very good product, an excellent product, uh, and one that hopefully will have some future integration to our CAD RMS software. Um, as, as uh, Spillman, our CAD RMS provider, is also owned by Motorola Solutions. So, uh, looking to go with this, um, I was trying to find a way to fund it because we didn't plan for having to replace these in our budget. And so, I reached out to Josh on what we had remaining in Fund 75, and it looks like we could have, or we do have the money available there if we're approved to use it. What's this cost? Um, the preliminary number, which is kind of what I'm hoping is going to be the final number, was $18,181. And that's for 15 cameras, uh, software licensing, um, charging, charging docks, uh, 
basically everything we need with those. Uh, in addition to those, I'm also purchasing for the squads, squad cameras for the two new squads we're getting this year, squad cameras out from WatchGuard, and these will integrate as well with the squad cameras. You mean dashboard cameras? Yep, yep, dashboard cameras. So does that cover all personnel? Uh, between what I'm getting, so so the, the squad ones are packaged, so yes. When I get the squad ones, those will come come with wearables. These 15 extras will cover the rest of my staff. That uh, coverage. And every officer will have their own camera, well, which is what we currently have right now. Yep. Won't be switching off. Or... No. The other nice thing about these, like I said earlier, kind of been batteries with these older cameras. These have replaceable batteries. So I'm going to order actually a few spare batteries with them as well. That way, if somebody does have a long ship, camera's dying, they can just go back to the office, grab another battery, put it on their camera, and go back out again. So that that'll be a nice a nice upgrade for us is the ability to change out batteries if they go bad, instead of having the whole camera need to be replaced. This might not be applicable, but there, but there's been a lot of supply of batteries. Yeah. Um, I think when I'm getting numbers for how quickly they'll deliver right now, I guess this is kind of the technology shortage we've seen everywhere is, you know, they're, they're, they're at least going to be a month out for delivery. So I think, I think there is a little bit of that. I think that's anywhere you look at technology right now, there's a backlog. And will you have a spare battery and, and a camera? Yep, so I'm ordering four spare batteries and I should have a camera that I could designate for like a part-time employee or a casual employee to be able to grab and wear if they were to come on duty. So I should have spare, uh, at least a spare on hand. Mr. Chair, can I ask a question? Sure, so, yeah. yeah. Um, Clay, I just wanna make sure I'm reading the, the spreadsheet right. So it looks to me like from Fund 75, what you're saying is there's still $40,710.92 left that was allocated for sheriff equipment? Correct, yes. And we'd be spending 18000 of it for these that's cameras. Not, that's, that's the plan. I, okay. I, I, yep. wrote in the, I wrote in the thing not to exceed $20,000. i am hoping I don't have to exceed what the original quote was. So. Okay, so, sounds good. Thank you. Right. That seems very clear. Mm -hmm. Good presentation. We'll make the motion to approve. Also with the motion. Second. Second. Second by Don. Any more discussion? No. It's the 18181, right? Yep. Yep. I see it. Thank you. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Against. Against. Motion carries. Thanks, Clay. Thank you. Treasurer reports. Mr. Chair, attached in your folder or on the website, you'll see the uh, historic treasurer reports that Treasurer Keller presents to us. I would defer to Treasurer Keller if there's any questions in regards to those. These are the regular monthly reports and everything looks good, except of course the interest as usual. Um, I did want to add that we'll be getting 1.9 million in state credit money, 500,000 in first dollar credit money, 200,000 in shared revenues, and then 10,000 in exempt computer aid on the 26th of July. Um, and then we hope to collect just under 3 million in taxes by the end of the month. We'll cross our fingers that that'll come in. But then we do have to turn around and pay out approximately five million in the August settlement. So that's all I have. Any ideas why sales tax was, sales tax was revenue was very large this last month? That's amazing. I believe that's um, would be sales from April. I think I believe it's two months behind. Oh. So in June, we would have gotten April, I believe. Well, it certainly looks good. 
We'll take it, yes, right? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Great. Good. He looks good everywhere. Thank you. Amazing. Good. Uh, How did we come out with the first payment of the tax? Taxes, Julie. I'm sorry, what was the question? Well, you know, if we got split tax time, so if we got July and January, how how did how did it come out the first part? Was it where you thought it would be or it was right in line with last year. Um, I was concerned too that maybe the delinquents would be way up, but they were not. So um they were I always take a percentage and they, they were right in there from last year. So I guess we'll know better when we know that all the tax stuff will be about well, the end of probably first September. Is that what you'll know? Next, next month. month, yeah. Next we'll month after we settle. Mm -hmm. Great. To do the August report, then we'll. Our July report should give you a good clue, and then August we finish it up. There's still mail coming in. Um, and that kind of thing in August that we still can credit, but that should tell the story. Thank you. Any questions for you? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Do we need to? I don't. Do we? Yeah. All right. We're moving along. Yeah. Handbook Amendment, HHS Addendum, Wage Modification for Bilingual ESS staff. Mr. Chair, looking today for a motion to approve the creation of a wage modifier for bilingual ESS staff. I will defer to Director Thorson to help better describe and explain the addition today. Thank you. Um, yes, this is a request to create a wage modifier of 75 cents an hour. Uh, for the economic support specialist position when that position is held by someone who has that bilingual fluency and can be assigned to a bilingual queue on the call center. Um, so the essentially the cost of making this change is relatively minimal and is covered by consortium funding, so it would not um, dip into any tax uh, levy or anything like that. It's a way to compensate someone who brings that special skill um, and can be utilized on that call center. That, that's part of that economic support contract. Well, we're not required to do that, okay. but yes, it's for the consortium. So yeah. that person would be answering calls in the eight counties that we're yeah. part of. Yeah. So it's the volume is relatively high and we have one individual on our staff who would have that skill set and could and is currently assigned to the queue. Um, I think uh, some of the counties in the consortia offer a modifier and others do not. And it was brought to my attention recently that there was a discrepancy there. And I think it's just one more way for us to um, maintain staff um, in a way that isn't too costly and still rewards them for something that they bring to the table. The, the modifier is requested because of the bilingual skill. That's correct. And 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 the definition of the modifier is merely the seventy-five cents an hour. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's in line with everybody else. Yeah. Well, there's a few different. Uh, one county is fifty cents. One county is seventy-five cents. Um, that's the range. So we are proposing. So you have somebody that can do this. We do have somebody. Yes. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, and it, it is a very essential position. I, yeah, I, it's a skill that's greatly needed. It uh, certainly needs. Let me ask you this: Do we have? This is maybe not on the agenda, but do we have a translator available to the sheriff's department? Well, in our building, no. But there, I believe uh, all of the county agencies have access to some interpreters, and yeah. then we utilize language lines. So if it, it, it's uh, we don't have an interpreter readily available, I, then I, we I use see. the the phone system. I just to... wondered if we had somebody who was bilingual that would care. Oh. Because this person will be tied to their 
then they wouldn't be able to just leave it I see. to meet that need. Probably some confidentiality. Well, there's perhaps. Yeah. Mr. Chair, sorry, Estabian, I move for approval. <laughs> bueno, gracias. Okay. Again, second. I'll second. London second. I think it's Any other discussion? Uh, to, the only thing comment I would make is that's that's pretty cheap to get. Yeah. It, that would be my only point. I mean, fifteen hundred dollars a year. But if someone was going to leave, I would definitely look at that again before <laughs> before yeah. they left. I guess is my, would be my only opinion. Yeah, that's, that's great. Okay. Yeah, but that's great. That. All right. Anybody else? Any discussion? Oh, I think that's very good, and I thank uh, Mr. Brewer for uh, moving it along. All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone against? Me, where are the? Oh, that's the next thing. All right. The All people are leaving. The third thing, right? Okay. Number fourteen, Health and Human Services Staffing Report. Report brought forward from Director Thorson is just a, a notification to the committee to have an understanding of where they're at for recruiting and retention. And I will turn it over to Director Thorson to expound upon it. Yeah, this, this is something we present to the Health and Human Services mm -hmm. Board on a monthly basis, kind of what the status of our personnel are. Um, we have had a pretty tough year in terms of maintaining staff and recruiting open positions. So uh, in the last month, we've lost three additional staff. Uh, since the beginning of the year, I believe that we have lost 12 staff. Um, and that's pretty significant for us. Uh, we have had periods of time where our um, retention has been a struggle. Uh, so I'm just really keeping the committee informed of that. We currently have nine vacancies. We did fill, I think, three vacancies just in the last week. Um, but some of those positions are very difficult to fill. Can I ask a question? Uh, maybe because uh, your name's on here, I guess. Isn't it? Robin Hampton. I am yeah. a little shocked that I saw that this morning. And uh, yes, uh, Rob, we're losing our uh, financial manager, and that's a really big deal yeah. um, with the complexities of our financing. Um, so, yes, that's correct. Have you done an exit interview with her? Or maybe you can't share that. Well, what I can share with you with um, nine out of the 12 vacancies, um, our wage not being competitive has been a, a large factor. So I'm really happy that we got the budget instructions that we did in terms of how we develop our budgets for next year. And I'm hoping mm -hmm. hope we're able to uh, make that happen. Okay. Mr. Chair. Yes, go ahead. Uh, with the reference to staffing, uh, Health and Human Services has a nice model for reporting staffing. You have a sort of an organizational chart. That how often do you present that quarterly? Or? I believe that's quarterly. The org chart. Uh, it's a very nice model. I don't know whether some of you have seen that, but I, uh, I know that Clint probably has. Very helpful to, to is it. An update, it, it would be nice model for other departments or, or for county wide, I think. Uh, but I really appreciate that. Thank you. So, have you advertised yet for that position? It's currently being advertised. Okay, I didn't see it in the paper, but maybe I wasn't looking. Yeah, it should be out there. Okay. Hopefully, you get. Yeah. How far do you do you go on? You go online with that too. You don't just yeah. We we advertise with the uh, Wisconsin County Human Services Association, Wisconsin Wisconsin Counties Association. There's some state websites that we go on. Um, we generally a uh, first round of uh, attempt to recruit. Uh, we pay for our local papers, but we don't pay for the other advertising. Um, just it's it's gotten so expensive that we kind of wait to see what we're able to recruit with. Oh, so you have to go like Indeed or anything like that? Oh, we do use Indeed. Indeed. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you get, you're getting you're reaching as far as you can reach. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. It's good. It's unfortunate, but you, when you see that kind of turnover, it's it's just it makes our job harder, I would say, not just yours, but we got to figure out a way to get this under control. On the fringe of the topic, and 
stop me if I'm going past our agenda item here, but the classification compensation authorization policy that will be voted on Tuesday does have some performance goals that we're looking for to make as an organization for each department. And I think that's like around 25%. The thing to understand is um, our turnover and as a whole as an organization, I think uh, the conversation with Tammy just yesterday is about 120 to 130 people each year. So out of a 450 person or seat operation, we're operating about a third turnover. Granted, some of those are entry level jobs that are turned over multiple times in a given year. But at the same time, though, we, we know that and that's why we're trying to do an influx of of wages this coming year. So I think we're trying to remedy it. It's just hopefully sooner than later and we, we slow down some of our permanent work. The question would be is, okay, so our first year hires, has anybody got a turnover rate on the first year? Uh, during their first year? Yeah, so you were hired in January. How many of them are left in in December or January I, I, one. We would probably be able to pull that, but I don't have it. Just curious, and, and just one of the only reasons why I bring that up is okay, so at our plant, 50%. First year. 50% is the first year turnover. And we're running at 30 some percent as a whole. But a lot of that's retirements too. So that you know it, it messes with that number a little bit. But first turnover rate over the last three to four years has been 50%. I guess in the report that I presented a few months ago, I, if I recall correctly, of the people who have left, their average length of stay had been less than two years. Yeah, so. it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. And, and it's not, it, it, unfortunately, it's, it's everywhere. So it's the same people that us in private fight for. It, they're, they're, I mean, basically, you can just move. Because you can go from here, and if this one decides to start paying more, well, you just leave and go there. Mm. You work your way around, I guess. But yeah, it's it's frustrating, but I guess we're gonna we're gonna fix it. That's, that's the goal. We're gonna remedy it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fix it. Any other comments? Thank you for doing it. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for it. Thank you. All right. We're on number fifteen. Future agenda items. Linda, do you have anything for future agenda no, items? No, I assume that Melissa is still working and everybody on the broadband and you're going to do something on Tuesday night, right? But I'm looking for a special meeting on Tuesday. Yeah, so as long as we keep working on that, I saw everything was being laid up down yay. So, so any comment from that from the extension side? Mm -hmm. So on the extension side, uh, Craig Sachs did a bunch of work to get that rolling. Um, Adam Haiti has stepped in for him since Craig has re retired. Um, Adam Adam is going to check there's a survey stuff. They're trying to figure out how yeah. to do the survey. Right. Um, so what Adam was going to do is check with River Falls. UW River Falls has a survey section of UW River Falls. That, that's what they do. Is okay. Survey is design. Uh, they do survey and, yeah. and they do the whole thing um, where the concern was is if you compare to Iowa County, Iowa County has a person that could do that work in their extension office where our extension office doesn't. And the question would be is maybe he's going to get the numbers, but he threw a number out there that 15 to 20,000. But now understand that's completing the survey, compiling the data. Right. You get everything yeah. you need right when it when it comes back. So now Adam's still working on that. He should have them numbers by the end of the month, though he was open. So at one of our next meetings, we'll have, I'll have something else. For you. Just tracking as a generated special progress through UW extension. Yeah. yeah. Good. Don, do you have anything? Yes, I. Uh, for the next agenda, maybe it hasn't come forward. Property committee. Uh, I was wondering about the area of Casnovia. How are you still transfer that at the board meeting or what's up there? Um, I can speak. The, the meet the property meeting was scheduled for the bit the beginning of the month. We didn't have a quorum, so it's still in the in the shoot. It'll be entertained at the beginning of next month. Oh, okay. I don't, and I don't think that needs to come through finance. 
uh, could come from property directly to the board. I see. So that they've, they've been inquiring. Yeah, I think I think we can do that directly. I will double check with corporate counsel to make sure. Yeah. All right. I think they've been more in the law. What? Village has. I do. I thought less than. Yeah, I was going to ask Melissa. Do you have anything? Not this month. Hey, Marty. Uh, I have nothing and I appreciate the way you ran the meeting. And it's the way meetings should go fast. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for that. You, I, you did a nice job with the meeting. I agree. Thank you. Yeah. And by the way, I didn't get a chance to say good afternoon, Melissa. <laughs> All right. Done. Done. Well, Adjournment, Mr. Chair, if we can just kind of review the yes, two special like meetings. Well, yes, Tuesday. That'd be great. Um, we're looking at and the agendas are posted, certainly can be amended. We're you know, we have up until 24 hours, but looking at a one o'clock yeah. um, boardroom for negotiations with our folks with WPPA. Yeah. One o'clock puts us in the room with closed door with the attorney. Uh, WPPA is plans on coming in at 1 30. Mm -hmm. uh, follow on meeting to try to do uh, entertain a an expedited effort on a Casanova broadband project is currently agended for 530 in person over at the Phoenix Center with the mindset of having it over there prior to the county board meeting so that county board members, if they choose, can come early and listen in to understand the presentation and what they would be voting on that night as this is a big project on a very small timeline. Yes. Um, and again, the, the mindset of doing a 530 is in talking with Josh, he thought it would be appropriate for about 45 minutes of presentation to get an understanding, education, and Q&A. Um, and I just wanted to leave some time there so we weren't butted right up to the meeting because I know that prior to a meeting, we're usually kind of scurrying around and tying up some things. So that was the mindset. If the, if the time needs to change to get a quorum, then by all means, let me know. As long as we get done with the 1 o'clock meeting in time. And Mr. Langrick, uh, you mentioned that the way I'll telephone, is that incorporated with the uh, uh, infrastructure funding. The petition that will be coming forward on Tuesday is for grant funding through the state, and there's a 50% local match of which they're asking for us to cover a portion. Oh. And then can we look at uh, as the next one would be the 3rd of August? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. You mind if I look at that just to make sure I have it? Yep. Yeah, the next routine schedule then would be August 3rd. And then August 20th right now. And August 24th. Yes, 20th and then 24th, 25th, 26th. In yeah, I've got them um, in question mark, question mark. Sure. Yep. Okay, I just wanted to have my calendar up to date. Okay, so um, my only, I won't be able to make it to that one o'clock one. Sure. So just to make sure we have enough for a quorum, I mean, if I absolutely had to so that we had enough. I'm I'd make planning it. on attending. Melissa and Marty, are you planning? I'll be there. I'll, I'll be, be there. there. Doc, are you, you planning done? on being there at the one o'clock one also? Uh, that's on the uh, this, this Tuesday. Yes. Yeah. Oh yes. Okay. Be, okay. Just so we got enough. Yeah. Otherwise, because I I'm just going back. Well, be careful. We'll have the lawyers come and not have a phone. Yeah. So if I needed to be there, if something happens, I, I just need a phone call or something so that I can get myself yeah. get myself over it. All right. So we got the next two meetings set up, and then our normal meetings will be a couple extra in August. So. Busy folks, busy stuff. All right, I'm entertaining a motion for adjournment. I'll so move. Linda with motion, I'll second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Clint, I have a question. I have to walk.